Australia. And welcome to this week's episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle program that doesn't just aim to solve some of your problems, we aim to solve them all. Oh yeah, we're raising the bar. That's right, and we do just that by giving you most of the experts with all the advice you need. Topped off with our special kind of warmth, I'm Sigourney. And if you're a modern woman like me, then you'll love the wonderful ideas I've got for you tonight. I'm Todd, and you should be looking to me if you're a DIYer. Because with Todd's tips, half a brain and a bit of luck, there's nothing on this planet you can't do yourself. I'm Dr Rudy, and my several medical degrees in a diversified portfolio means I know all that is about the finer things in life. And tonight I'll be sharing that by showing you how to get the most out of a good wad. That sounds all right. That's right, we've got that and so much more. So let's not keep them waiting. Let's get started. With the boom in DVD sales and expensive widescreen TVs, inviting your friends over for a movie night when you've just got a normal TV and VCR has become an embarrassing business. But you don't want to seem cheap or behind the times, even if you are just going to watch The Man Who Sued God, because there's bound to be at least one film snob who gets really upset because the director's grand vision hasn't been fully realised. But if you take a tip from Todd, you can appear to be a hip cineast without the expense. All you've got to do is build yourself a widescreen frame for your existing TV. Give it a lick of paint, then just glue this to your TV, making sure it covers the top and bottom bits of the screen. And there you have it. You're fully equipped for the glorious widescreen revolution. Of course, the picture will be smaller and harder to see, but don't worry, that's exactly the way film snobs like it. And if anyone dares to ask why you can't see the top of people's heads, just tell them it's the director's cut, but that you can program it to show a pan and scan version if they like. They'll be so frightened of being seen to be a philistine, no one will say a word. Happy viewing. These suicide bombers in the West Bank sure to get a lot of publicity. When you think about it, blowing yourself on a bus full of people to smithereens really is the ultimate publicity stunt. I'm surprised Richard Branson hasn't done it. So, if you've got a product or business that you want to promote, why don't you give it a go? Of course I'm not advocating that you kill yourself. That'd be stupid. But think about it. Australia already has one of the world's highest youth suicide rates. If kids are killing themselves anyway, why not harness their marketing potential? You'll be doing them a favour if you don't let them die in vain. Meet Brian. He's 17 years old and lives 100 k's from the nearest person his age. He's lonely, tired of living up to his parents' expectations, and he's pretty sure he's gay. And out here, there's no one to talk to about it. So Brian has decided to end it all. Great news for me, because I want to raise the profile of my babysitting business. Now, I'm just going to get Brian to make a quick video. Something that I can give to the TV networks to run on their various news bulletins. Go ahead, just say what I told you to say. Penny's a really good babysitter. Call her on this number. And cut. Perfect. Okay, you got your student concession card? Good. Goodbye, Penny. Yeah, see, I wouldn't want to be you. Oh, remember, it's the red button. And that's all there is to it. All publicity is good publicity. And the best way to promote your business is to make a lot of noise. See ya. In many ways, having a mastectomy is a real downer. But once it's gone, you might as well look on the bright side. You never need to carry a handbag again. I'll show you what I mean. Instead of filling your empty bra cup with useless padding, why not use it as a storage pouch for all your bits and pieces? Simply sew in a backing and a clasp, making the redundant side of your bra into a handy pocket. And here it is. Plenty of room for lipstick, breath mints and house key. And if you're a D cup, you can fit all this and so much more. Tampons, 
perfume and capsicum spray. What time does Sula meeting us? Can I borrow your phone? And there you go, girls. A fabulous bra that gives you that chic shape, but with the convenience of built-in storage. There's nothing like a fine glass of wine. Of course, most people have no idea what a fine wine is, because they're heathens, which is why it is always so painful having to share good wine when you go to a dinner party. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to bypass that dilemma. All you have to do is go to the bottle shop and purchase the cheapest bottle of cooking sherry. Then, run a sink full of hot water and soak off the label. Now, you don't want to rush it and tear the label, so take your time. And while you're waiting for the glue to dissolve, ring your hostess. How's it? Yes, it's Dr. Rudy here. I was just wondering what you are serving tonight, so I know what wine to bring. Okay. See you at eight then. Bana. Beef stroganoff. Well, Grange Hermitage should be perfect. Now, our sherry label should be ready. Simply stick it over our lovely bottle of wine. Rudy, hello. I bought some wine. Oh, thank you. Oh, you'll probably get to have that all yourself. I don't think anyone else will drink sherry tonight. Really? What a shame. Barna. Hey, Sigourney, did you notice that Penny wasn't around at the start of the show? Yes, of course I did. I think we all did. We're just trying not to make a point of it. Well, what happened? Where is she? Apparently her bail didn't come through, so she won't be with us tonight. Bail? Oh, Todd, she's not the first lifestyle presenter to be bailed out of a compromising situation. So when will she be back? Well, I don't know, but don't worry. I mean, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> just had your home decorated, I bet you can't wait to throw a party and show it off to all your friends. Well, you mustn't. I can't emphasise this enough. You must not let your friends into your home. Not until you've had it thoroughly checked out. Because all it takes is one IKEA label showing, one curtain that clashes with the carpet, or one picture of dogs playing pool in the upstairs bathroom, and that's it. That'll be the one thing your friends snigger about for months. So you need to call in an expert. Ramon, darling. Sigourney! You need to get one of your oh, gay friends to come over. Oh, love what you've done with the place. Why don't you take a look around? Mm. Gay men are like truffle pigs. On the scent of bad taste, let one loose in your house and he'll sniff out any decorating sins, no matter how deep they're buried. Oh, Sigourney, darling. This fabric does not go with the couch upholstery. Oh, my God. You're so right. Oh, Sigourney, what were you thinking? Knickknacks are so 90s. Sigourney, you have frozen pizza in your freezer. Do you really want your friends to know you eat processed food? Hmm? Thank you so much for coming by. Oh, my pleasure. I love what you've done with the place. It's, it's really coming along. What a relief. I can't believe I thought I was ready. Nothing beats a gay man for putting you in your place. <sighs> and best of all, I don't have to worry about Ramon telling my girlfriends about my mistakes. They won't be talking to him this month. Not once I tell them how I walked in on him having sex with a woman. If I was all to go shopping, I'd take my sister, but I'd even take a friend that's gay, yeah, I would, because they're honest and they'll tell me straightforward, like, if it suits me, if it looks good. A lot of designers and hairdressers, the Muslim make pretty gay, and they're definitely good hairdressers. They're not more artistic, but they're just, I think, trying to make a statement, maybe, to show that they're different. My fucking puffs are dickheads, I don't give a shit what they are. I don't think they're anything. Jeez, I miss Penny. Why? I don't know. 
I just reckon she'd really like this next segment. If you're like me, it doesn't matter how much effort you put into your dental hygiene, it's still nearly impossible to get rid of the nicotine and caffeine stains on your teeth. And we all know that those whitening toothpaste and chewing gums just don't cut it. But don't worry, there is a cheap and simple alternative. All you need is a set of, that's right, ladies' fake fingernails. So many products with a dual purpose go unnoticed. You just need to think outside the set square. Just peel off the backing and stick it to the stained tooth. So take a tip from Todd, if your teeth are tainted, tart them up today. I love hitchhiking. It's such an affordable way to travel. The only problem is, hitchhiking has received such bad press and as a result, the only people game enough to pick you up will be psychopaths, serial killers and kidnappers. <laughs> ah. Thanks, mate. <clears throat> Which shouldn't be a problem, as long as you kidnap them first. So where you want? <clears throat> now that I've made him harmless, I can take my time and enjoy the drive without having to worry about paying for my trip with my life. Sure, technically I've committed one of the most serious crimes, but really there's no harm done. He wakes up 500 k's later, well rested and ready to continue with his drive. So if anything, I've done a public service, helping this driver to stop, revive, survive. See ya. Hi. Hello. You don't remember me, do you? Of course I do, silly. <laughs> I just have to powder my nose. Back in a sec. Although most people you meet are worth forgetting, is there anything more mortifying than forgetting the name of someone you've known? I mean, how do you know how to react to what they say? Of course, with the advent of palm computing, it's become easy to remember all those things you could never remember before. But it doesn't have to stop at just birthdays and star signs. You can record everything, and I mean everything. It's so easy and powerful. By entering and cross-referencing all the important things about a man on my date base, it's easy to get a match on anyone you're unsure of. I've linked colour of hair, brand of suit and condition of fingernail with job, suburb, tax bracket and personal prowess. Then when I cross-reference, voila! Meet Tony, the 38-year-old Turak chiropractor who drives a Porsche, likes sharing drinks when kissing, and... Ooh. Now with your trusty date base, you need never be embarrassed again when you see faces you don't recognise immediately. So, how are those golden hands of yours, Tony? And there you have it, a powerful tool at my fingertips. Ah, that's it. Well, Todd, look at the amount of letters we've received this week. Are you worried about Penny, Dr. Rudy? Worried? Why should I be worried? Well, like with her being locked up and everything, it's not a very nurturing environment for a young lady. Dodd, you're talking about Penny. She's probably made a bunch of new friends, caught up with some old ones. She's a resourceful girl who knows how to take care of herself. Yeah, but it's like jail. You know how you hear things? Only if you listen. Too true. So, uh, what do we got coming up next? Probably this. In the roulette game of life, we're all waiting for the ball to drop into our slot. That's why we read our horoscopes in the paper. Of course, most of us know it's all crap. But there is a percentage of the population out there that actually believe in these mystics and psychics. These people are called bored, rich housewives. Sadly, the only way many of these bored, rich housewives can get spiritual is by slowly drinking themselves into oblivion in their well-appointed mansions. The good news is 
that these same women are willing to throw away good money to get a spiritual leg up. So, grab your coat of many colours, hang a shingle in the top end of town and get your slice of the paranormal pie. In 1982, the federal government passed a bill called the Freedom of Information Act. Since all the other states have followed suit, you now have legal access to all the juicy and profitable tidbits of information floating about. If you're willing to wade through lots of files and bureaucracy, you can get your hands on all sorts of dirt and make it work for you. Place an ad in a local upmarket rag. Then when they leave their name and address on your answering machine, you'll already have leads to go to work on. By the time they lob in for their reading, you should already have hit internet databases, the land titles office and family law court transcripts to find out plenty of information about your client. On the basis of this information, combined with signals from their bored, rich body language, I can make all sorts of educated guesses. Remember to keep it ambiguous and they'll answer all their questions for you. Come, Lena. I am sensing by your aura you're about to engage in a money transfer. Yes, Madam Penny. I have your money here. Oh, I'm sensing some disquiet with your husband. <laughs> See ya. Oh, tops. It's a problem a lot of dog owners face. You come home, it's dark, chances are you're going to end up stepping in a lawn landmine. But don't worry, there is a way to make it easier to dodge his doo-doo in the dark. All you got to do is make some changes to your dog's diet. So from now on, why not feed him a meal that's two parts tin dog food, one part glowworms. Dogs love any food that's high in protein. I reckon this mix will go down a treat. So take a tip from Todd and dye your dog's diet daily. It'll ensure his lawn landmines are luminous and you won't put a foot wrong. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. Are you worried about your teenage daughter having sex? The last thing you need is for your baby to have a baby. But unfortunately, it's a fact of nature. Once she bleeds, she breeds. So when your little girl hits puberty, you're going to have to start thinking about sex prevention strategies. You could show her how to use a condom. But condoms are only effective 99% of the time. Even less if the randy little prick refuses to wear one. No, it isn't enough to fill your daughter's head with idealistic theories, give her a handful of condoms and let her make decisions for herself. If you want her to stay sterile, it's up to you to stop the boys from making a move. You need to make your daughter unattractive to the opposite sex. And the best way to do that is to get her fat. Get her to eat lots of fatty foods and carbohydrates. The aim is to keep her weighing 85 kilos from the ages of 12 to 21. That way she'll stay as pure as the driven snow. Sure, you may find her disgusting to look at yourself, but it's better to have a fatty bombard in the family than a filthy slut. Then when she comes of age, you can starve her down and marry her off. Bana. <laughs> Exercise is very important for the modern woman. This is Tai Chi, a stylized form of exercise that also helps develop a calm and tranquil mind through the movements of martial arts. Each movement has a different name. This is the crane. As you probably know, martial arts are used for self-defense. And I've found that in most cases, when an 85 kilo man is getting physical with you, these ancient teachings are completely useless. So I've developed and teach my own form of martial art that's more effective than any Tai Chi, Jiu Jitsu or Taekwondo. I call it Comply Can Do. 
Morning, ladies. Morning, Sigourney. Comply Can Do is the modern marital art of rolling with the punches, teaching you how to take a fall without hurting yourself, while helping to develop a calm and empty mind, free from any antagonism or backtalk. Now, like Tai Chi, each Comply Can Do movement has a different name. I call this movement the kiss of the doorknob. It looks simple enough, but there are a couple of tricks to it. Firstly, make sure you turn your head to match the projection of the fist. Turning it the wrong way will double the effects of the impact. Turning it the right way will make it feel more like a graze instead of a break. I call this one miscarriage by moonlight. Simply arch your back while tensing the stomach muscles. Then, as you double over, expel as much air as possible to avoid being winded. <sighs> now, it has to be one fluid movement so your man doesn't feel you pulling away from him or offering any sort of resistance. I call this movement the shy turtle. The goal here is to provide the ribs with protection from any stray kicks. So, as soon as you're forced to the floor, Tuck your head towards your knees, fold your arms and then place your hands over your ears. Now, any blows that land will be on the fleshier parts of the body, meaning less broken bones for you and less split knuckles for him. Comply and do. Nice work. And there you go, ladies. So, if a bit of a rough and tumble's your man's thing, why not give Comply Can Do a go? a low-impact exercise that lets you enjoy the slap as well as the tickle. Well, I'm near on speechless, but here we are at the end of another show. Yes, and haven't we improved a lot of people's lives? And if we haven't... Make sure you tune in next week, because we've got another top show coming your way. And in the meantime, why not go on a spiritual journey and discover yourself? Oh, and Penny, you can see us now. I hope you're doing OK. Good night, Australia. She's in the park.